During the formation of the company, there were a lot of competing models out there as to how we could modernize the grid. There was only one that thought that an independent transmission company was the answer. And then, of course, there was the whole utility system at large that basically did not want the independent transmission model to succeed because once the independent transmission model succeeds, ultimately in the day, we are going to have competition at the wholesale level. Well, it was important for ITC to separate from DTE because from DTE's perspective, this was really a business decision on their part. But from ITC's perspective and really from the perspective of the customer, this was about making needed investments back into the transmission grid on behalf of our customers. I wanted to diversify the economic base of Oakland County. So we studied the sectors, and lo and behold, right among the 10 sectors, of course, is technology that goes along with utilities and so forth. And here's one now that's uh, forming and, and growing and taking root in Oakland County, it's uh, ITC. It fit in perfectly. I have uh, nothing but the warmest of feelings in my heart for the, the 38 people that chose day one to come and help me start this company. So for me, when the opportunity came to go with the sale and the transaction, it was a no-brainer. I wanted to see this business plan work. At the time, I don't remember us really being very concerned about, about the risk or the, 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 uh, the leap of faith that we were taking. We all just really pulled together and had a great can-do spirit and got things off the ground and up and running. KKR was the right fit for this job. In fact, private equity was the right fit for this job. ITC had set out to really address a significant problem this country faced and still faces today, which is rebuilding critical infrastructure. So that investment by ITC and Joe Welsh gave me some uh, ability to go out and recruit the kinds of businesses and assure them, look, once you're here, you're going to have the, uh, the utility support that you need to, you know, to move forward. We are a purely independent transmission service provider, which means we have no participation in the buying or selling of electrons in the marketplace. We're truly independent from any, any market participant. We're a new way of owning, maintaining, and improving the transmission grid. We represent a new and better way of doing things, and that's part of the excitement about the company. It's a unique position to be in because it allows ITC to step back and be a trusted advisor to the industry. If you just ask somebody off the street, what's transmission day, it, it takes a little bit of explaining it to you. So we, we thought we had to set up a process where the people that are actually directly connected to transmission or interested in the transmission business had a venue to come and hear what we're doing, ask questions of us, and get answers and res resolution to issues that they may have about transmission. It just so happens on the day that the blackout occurred that uh, we were over there in the morning and I happened to discuss uh, blackouts. I said, chances are it never happened. In the long term, I think that the blackout really cemented what, um, what was already our vision of improving reliability, uh, access to markets, bringing down the cost of energy, all our, all our taglines. The Milan project was a very, you know, uh, energizing project for ITC because it was really the first project that we got our hands on, you know, cut from whole cloth, if you will. It's, it's something that we planned originally. We saw that all the way through the construction phase. Casual for the Cause was started in 2004, which was very early in our company's creation, and it was important for us to give back to the community, so it was a fun way to do it. We wear jeans on Fridays, and then we contribute to a charity that's important to the company. Employees get to make recommendations on charities, so a lot of them are personal to employees. We don't just talk about safety around here, we live it, and it's extremely, it's the most important thing that we do. It's very important that you let people know that you're an environmental steward because you're in their backyard. I think in your operations, 
how you handle your environmental compliance is as important as some of the stewardship outreach activities you do with the community and supporting some community environmental stewardship efforts. So together both kind of fit into ITC's best in class philosophy. One of my proudest moments was getting that initial uh, filing for our public offering. Myself, along with Joe Welsh and, and our CFO, we were part of the team that did a road show all around the country to try to entice you know, prospective investors to buy our stock when it went public. And we look back now uh, almost seven years, seven plus years as a public company, and I think we have a great track record of growth. We've grown on average about 20% a year every year since we've been a public company. We've increased our dividend consistently every year since we've been a public company. We actually started ITC grid development before we made the METSI purchase. It was actually a year in advance of that. And that was to start to feed a long-term growth engine for the company and to try to see how many rocks we could turn over. ITC Great Plains was an idea of entering into a new geography, essentially building a project from the ground up. It started with a need that was identified by various regulatory authorities and others in that particular region, and ITC stepping in and saying, we'll build those projects. I think we were viewed positively by Southwest Power Pool staff because we were helping them shake up the status quo. I think they were interested in getting more things going in terms of building transmission in the Southwest Power Pool region. When the Michigan Electric Transmission Company footprint came over, for us now it was a matter of just expanding the scope of our operations and extending that into additional service territory. And really uh, changing the, the dynamic of the company and we essentially doubled the company overnight. We closed the deal after the regulatory process on December 20th of 2007. Um, many of us became employees of ITC Midwest the next day. What I was really looking for was that, that progress in, in improving the system for the benefit of customers. None of us had ever heard of ITC um, even just a couple of years ago and they come to Cedar Rapids and uh, you could tell that the intent immediately was to, to be a community partner. Cedar Valley Habitat had a renewed interest for serving a, a, a great number of families on an annual basis after the flood, and ITC was one of the first to step up and say, we want to help you do that. Murphy Substation was an opportunity where we had to serve a very large customer load. I guess the big deal there was just that we were uh, able to meet that customer's expectations. They had a really tight timeline, they wanted us to get things done really quickly, and uh, we were able to do that for that customer. Regional transmission has a whole different dynamic to it than uh, doing the just local replacement and rebuild because the laws of the country as they were developed over time do not facilitate building utilities from the ground up. They only facilitate regulating them as they exist today. Well, one of the things I think leads to success is our forward thinking, like the Green Power Express project. That's something we would have never done in, a, in the former company, but at ITC it's the type of forward thinking that we have to advance projects to move transmission forward.
We've connected over 2,200 megawatts of, of wind generation since, since we began. We've been able to, through that effort, improve the, the transmission system so it's more reliable. We've provided new sources of energy for customers to help lower the cost. But we've also enabled a lot of economic development to occur within the state that would not have occurred otherwise. There's more to building transmission than just putting wires in the air and uh, having transformers sitting on a pad somewhere. If that was all there was to this business, uh, then anyone could do it. The tough part is operating the system and maintaining the system and especially responding to emergencies and emergency conditions. I would say it's definitely true that the KEDA project and the V-Plan together provide benefits that are greater than the, than the sum of their individual parts. ITC Great Plains has been a major player, has shown a high level of commitment and persistence in seeing these projects through. KEDA appreciates your efforts as we continue to work together to further expand the grid and connect with other states. That way, all Kansas can have access to more diverse and competitive energy sources. power grid continue to handle the demands of these scorching temperatures? Well certainly we've seen over the course of the last several days our systems here in Michigan and Iowa and the southern part of Minnesota have performed very well and we've been very pleased with how our operational readiness model has allowed our systems to be able to keep up with the ever-increasing demand we've seen as the temperatures have continued to rise. Performed flawlessly, uh, no issues. And you know, for me personally, it's, um, it's a bit of a reward and personal satisfaction to see how hottest day of the year, it's just like any other day. And that's really how the company comes together. So that's the, the culmination and the success of folks in engineering and equipment maintenance and the operations folks and planning. And it's, that's our combined success at ITC. That's what we work towards is to make sure that our system is there to serve the customers uh, when we have peak demand or at all times. We're getting the, the facilities in place to improve the market. Salem Hazleton 345 KV line, uh, you know, that one's been on the books uh, for 25 years, and, and we're finally building that, and, and we'll complete that this year. All of those developments were able to happen because of the uh, foundation of operational excellence that we like to operate the company with, and so those developments come in more incremental steps. The ITC Great Plains Expansion Plan will continue to evolve. It'll take about three to five years to really go through the full transmission planning process at the Southwest Power Pool with all the other projects that have been identified. As we are celebrating 10 years as a, as a company, I think the future is brighter than the past, and the, and the past has been tremendously bright for us. We have nothing but further growth ahead of us. We have the right business model in the industry right now. I wouldn't bet against ITC's future. I think we're doing incredible work. Um, on behalf of the customers and uh, you know just extremely proud of, of what we have created and, and where we're going. Passion's what pushes you over the top. I, I think you watch sporting teams and you'll see an underdog continually whip the favored team when they go in there playing with passion, playing as a team, really dedicated to the win not to the personal achievements and when we get there, uh, you, I don't think you were ever there. I think Vince Lombardi said something like, uh, we strive for excellence, we know we'll never achieve it, but on the way we'll pass through great. Happy 10 years, ITC. 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 Happy 10 years, ITC, and many more ahead. <laughs>